Right guys, so a video for you to understand Sega Dreamcast with the ReDream emulator. Quite excited about this. I'm a Sega boy at heart. New emulator on the Google Play Store quite recently. I think the 19th it came out. So yeah, I want to show off the games, but I want to do some frequently asked questions as well to help you out. Quite a few, quite a few of you are having problems. So we'll get the boring stuff out of the way first. I'm going to knock your eight Android phone, Android Pi, Snapdragon 835, Processor. Now, some of you are having trouble with the emulator just crashing. Now, unfortunately, on a Google Play Store, it's not filtering correctly which devices are compatible or not. You need to have Android 5, which I'm pretty sure is Lollipop or higher. If you've got KitKat, fairly certain that's Android 4, that's not good enough. The Android version is not the be all and end all of it. It always comes down to your hardware, whether the graphics chip has all the OpenGL instructions. So, if you're having serious problems, it just could be the device isn't good enough unfortunately so some of you might have a better phone than me you might see better performance i do have a shield tv i'll try it out on there as well uh something else people like to do as well as me is use front ends to get an app to show off your games and load them with an emulator it's called launch intent uh, unfortunately redream doesn't do it right now i have spoken to the developers they said yeah we meant to do that um but we got swamped with day one crash reports. They will add the feature very, very soon. So that will be for Hyperspin and like Art Browser. There are other front ends. I like to use Hyperspin on the Shield TV, but it doesn't work on my phone. Art Browser does work on both. I really like the voice search feature on Android TV, but on my phone, it's the go-to front end. So we'll just load it quickly. We we'll see we've got Dreamcast there. That's using the Raycast standalone emulator and i've done another one for a dream so although it shows the games it won't load them directly at the moment it just goes to the main menu so if you're struggling with it stop the feature just isn't supported at the moment so we'll come back to that another day i can do another video to talk you through setting up art browser and the settings for hyperspin so we'll come into my file manager explore to the left is my internal storage the android folder data io.recompile.redream and we've got the files folder so why am i coming here well you might want to add your own dreamcast bios you don't have to redream has one built in but i wanted to add my own i already had so you might have what i have it's dc underscore boot dot bin and dc underscore flash dot bin so rename them they must be boot dot bin and flash dot bin for redream to recognize them so i've done that to the right we have my sd card the roms folder and sega dreamcast now this can get confusing because there's all sorts of file types we hear people talking about chd cdi gdi some people are saying games aren't showing so i'm going to talk about ikaruga because i noticed this the gdi file i had was nearly 800 megabytes and it worked in raycast but redream just wouldn't see it and what i found is uh you need to have these extra tracks otherwise they don't work uh so if you've got a gde file gdi file and that's all you have it's probably not going to work i had to resource it um so yeah now you know some games like sega rally 2 are for windows ce on dreamcast so they aren't compatible go online and check google it find out which ones are windows ce that can be done on pc with emulators like dmol retroarch has a raycast core for windows ce but i don't see it happening on android devices anytime soon so what i think i'm going to do is convert these gdi files to the chd format it will compress them a little bit for me help me out it will help me for hyperspin as well uh, art browser is awesome in that it can see subfolders hyperspin we've got something called the folder trick but if we do that it has a knock-on effect to the media folders as well so i don't really want to use gdi like this for hyperspin uh we use a chd man Google it, you'll find it. GDI to CHD, you'll find the tools you need. Uh, there is CDI format as well. I don't like using that because the FMV, like the, the cutscenes, sometimes they get cut out to save space. So I like to use GDI, but I think we'll be going CHD in the future. So that's enough of that. Let's go into the emulator itself. So what it's going to do, first of all, is ask me if I want to do light mode or upgrade to premium. Now, I probably will do this. Premium will let me run a higher resolution than what the Sega Dreamcast originally used. What I'm hearing, even powerful devices like the Shield TV struggle at like double the resolution. Uh, but I do want to support the developers. I've noticed this is working 
much better than Raycast. I use the Google reward scheme. They give me surveys. I answer the questions. I get credit. I save it up and I can use that to buy games and apps with Google money. But I'm not going to do it just yet. I want to see if the light mode will work with Arc Browser and Hyperspin. So once I've tried that, I'll give the devs some money. So coming to the, the main menu, it's showing my game artwork. It's done this for me. I've got the library tab. So it did find my game straight away. I was quite impressed. But we can add a directory. If you've got it on your SD card or internal storage, mine are on the SD card. So the input tab. So it does have an on-screen control, like a touchpad. I don't suggest you use that. I've got a Bluetooth pad here. It has seen it, the 8-bit dough. So I'm just going to touch that and customize, customize the binds, the buttons, because it didn't do a very good job doing it automatically. I tried to play Quake Free Arena, and I couldn't shoot the gun. So I've come in here. I can exit the emulator, set that to click in the right thumbstick. Main menu, so I can pick another game. Click the left thumbstick. Turbo is select. Speeds it up if you want to skip through stuff. Start button is start. Just make sure the triggers and all, all the buttons work as they should do. So we'll go to the video tab. I've set the aspect ratio to 16 by 9. 4 by 3 is what it should be, but I want to use what my display has to offer. Frame rate counter is on, so you can see the frames per second. Polygon sort accuracy, I'm fairly certain per strip is default, but there is per pixel settings as well. I'll just leave it as per strip. Seems pretty good as it is. So region, I'm fairly certain I've got a region free BIOS. I can play Ikaruga, which is a Japanese game. No problems, but we can boot to BIOS. As I've added in my own BIOS, this option comes up. So there we go. I can go into File and Manage the Saves. Just going to click the left thumbstick and play some games. So Dead or Alive 2, give that a go. So I have noticed, I don't know if you want to call it frame skipping, just some slight stutters in games, but it does play very well. It seems to be much better than Raycast, so I'm pretty impressed. Uh, Ikaruga there, Japanese games, we'll let that load. Thank you. 
be able to do. I have to remember not to get carried away playing a game. So Power Stone of a popular game, Quake Free Arena. I think we'll do Soul Calibur. Uh, that used to have problems on Raycast, the main menu had graphical glitches and some of the levels you couldn't see the sky. So we'll load that up. See the stutter there. Menu looks good. Welcome back to the stage of history. Meet Sudoki. I'll do guys yeah some slight stuttering but it's very playable very impressed with it so I'll leave the video there I'll come back when we can do front ends when the launch intent is implemented so have a great day whatever it is you're doing and uh, I'll see you guys when I see you next ciao for now